Our second story is called Mr. Mean, written by Roger Hargreaves. Mr. Mean lives up to his name. He lived in what could have been a nice house, but wasn't. He never painted it, or mended the windows, or repaired the roof. Inside it was the same. No carpets, no curtains, no pictures, no fires. And Mr. Mean was so mean, he made his furniture out of old orange boxes, and then complained about the price of nails. Why he was so mean, do you know what he gave his brother for Christmas last year? A piece of coal. It wasn't, if, it wasn't as if Mr. Mean didn't have any money. Oh no, he has lots of money, and he kept it all hidden in a box, which he kept in the kitchen. Every evening, he sit there counting it. It was the only thing Mr. Mean liked doing. But would he spend it? Oh, dear me, no. Not old Meanie. Not if you could help it. One day, Mr. Mean was sitting in his gloomy kitchen having a gloomy meal. He only ever had one meal a day, and that day, he was only having a cup of water and a piece of bread, which was three weeks old. Yuck. Suddenly, he was interrupted by a knock at the door. Drat, he said, because he didn't like people. Drat and bother. He opened the door, and there on his doorstep was a wizard. A rather fat lizard. Wizard, I mean. <laughs> hey, yo, said the wizard. I wonder if, by any chance, it's, as it's such a warm day, you could possibly, if it's not too much trouble, so... Be so kind as if to, if it's not convenient. Perhaps, as I'm very thirsty, provide me with, do you think, a glass, if it's not too much to ask, of water, please? He was a very wordy wizard. No, replied Mr. Ro mean rudely, and shut the door in his face, and went back into the kitchen to finish his meal. But there standing in front of him was the wizard. How did you get in? gasped Mr. Mean. Well, replied the wizard, it was by how shall I put, I just, well, you know, wave the old, what's it say, magic wand, don't you know, and, well, here I am, if you know what I mean. You must be very poor, he remarked kindly, looking around. Oh, yes, I am, said Mr. Mean, lied Mr. Mean. Then perhaps I could help you, said the wizard, pulling up a box to sit down on. The box didn't move, so the wizard pulled it harder. And this time it did move. In fact, it tipped up and spilled all Mr. Mean's money all over the floor. Well, 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 exclaimed the wizard, eyeing the money rolling over the kitchen floor. Well, 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 well. It would appear to me, he continued, that you, sir, are an old meanie. Mr. Mean didn't hear him. He was much too busy scrabbling all over the floor trying to pick up his money. And meanies, added the wizard, need to be taught a lesson. So saying, he waved his magic wand. All the money turned into potatoes. Potatoes? Poor Mr. Mean. Oh, oh dear, oh dear me, he wailed. Please turn my back, my money back into money. Oh, please, 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 he begged. Perhaps, replied the wizard. But on the other hand, taking all things into account, by and large, things being what they are, on the face of it. Perhaps not. However, continued the wordy wizard, if you make me a solemn promise never to be mean again, then I will turn your money back into money. But, he added sternly, if you are ever mean again, then it's, how can I put it, then it's potatoes for you, my lad, if not other vegetables as well. Then the wizard had the glass of water he'd come it for in the first place, except it was a cup of water because Mr. Mead didn't have any glasses. Then with another wave of his wand, he turned the potatoes back into money and another wave of his wand made himself disappear. <sighs> Stupid wizard, muttered Mr. Mean, picking up all his money. 
The following day, Mr. Mean decided to walk to town. He never took the bus because that costed money. On the way, he met an old washerwoman carrying an enormous bundle of washing. Please, kind sir, he asked, could you possibly help me to carry this washing? It's so heavy. No, replied Mr. Mean. It's your washing. You carry it. But as soon as he said that, he felt a tingling in his nose. You'll laugh at this. But Mr. Mead's nose turned into a carrot. Oh no, he gasped. The old woman, oh, washerwoman chuckled. And then Mr. Mead remembered the wizard's promise. Yes, yes, he cried in a panic. Of course I'll help you. And he carried the huge bundle of washing to where the old washerwoman wanted. And the carrot turned into a nose. And off he went. The old washerwoman chuckled again and turned back into the wizard. It had been him all along. On his way home, on his way into town, Mr. Mean passed by a cottage garden. In the garden, there was an old man chopping wood. He saw Mr. Mean as he passed and called out. Excuse me, he called. Could you give an old man a bit of a young fellow, me lad? No, replied Mr. Mean. It's your wood. You chop it. But as soon as the word has... But as soon as the word has... Oh, my God. But as soon as the words had passed his lips, guess what happened? You'll chuckle at this. But his ears turned into tomatoes. Oh, no, he gasped. The old man chuckled, and Mr. Mean remembered the wizard's words. Yes, yes, he cried. Of course I'll give you a hand. And he chopped and he chopped until all the wood was cut, and the tomatoes turned back into ears, and off he went. The old man chuckled again and turned back into the wizard. He was teaching Mr. Mean a lesson, just as he'd promised. Eventually, Mr. Mean arrived in town. There was a little boy crying because his ball had got stuck on top of a wall. Please, sir, <clears throat> cried the boy. Please, sir, could you, could you reach my ball down for me? No, said Mr. Mean. It's your ball, you... And then he stopped. He f there was a funny tingling feeling in his feet. Yes, yes, he said, and how he said, quickly, of course I will. And he reached up and passed the boil to the boy, and went on his way, looking anxiously at his feet. The little boy stopped crying and turned into the wizard. I think, he said to himself, I think that Mr. Mean, by and large, is beginning, if I'm not very much mistaken, to be not quite so mean, and I think, although I could be wrong, although I never am, that he has, thank goodness, learned his lesson. Today, he's nothing so, like so mean as he used to be, and he doesn't keep his money in a box in the kitchen anymore. He spent it all on having his house mended and painted and made spick and span. And he's turned into quite a generous sort of a fellow. Goodness, he's so generous. But do you know what he gave his brother last Christmas? Not one, two lumps of coal. Time for story three.